Have a seat. Relax. Make yourself comfortable. Order a pizza, brew a pot of coffee, because we're diving in deep. This is part one of a two-part series. First is how to install the light version of Kobold AI. And then the next video after this is part two is going to be how to do long-form roleplay with it. Kobold can run the newer tokenizers and some of the state-of-the-art models that text generation web UI and open web UI cannot at least not as of yet, because they have to be updated. Kobold allows you to run GGUF models, which are especially good for running your own AI locally. GGUF allows you to split the compute across your CPU and your GPU, or just use a CPU if you don't have a GPU. This will run the usual language models that you can get from Hugging Face. I'm first gonna show you how to download and install the one for Windows. If you're using Linux, you can skip ahead from this section. I've already divided this video up into chapters. For Windows, you scroll down to the area where it says Windows Usage Precompiled Binary. Click on download the latest COBOL.CPP release here, and then scroll down. The file is right here. It's COBOL.CPP, and I'll download it right into the Downloads folder. I'm over on Hugging Face now. I'm going to use Gemma Sutra 9B version 1 for the test, and this is an uncensored model. I'm clicking on Files and Versions. I'm going to grab this Full Precision 16 and click the Download link over here and give it a little bit of time to download because it's a big file. I'm going to make sure to save it into the same directory where I downloaded COBOL. Now you just have to go into the directory where you downloaded it and double click koboldcpp.exe. Windows Defender might give you this notice, so you click more info and then run anyway. It's going to run uh, this little command line window here and it's going to go through the steps it needs to prepare it. I'm using Ubuntu for this. You're going to download the koboldcpp-linux-x64-cuda1210 file. That's going to be the one for a newer NVIDIA GPU. Let it download. Then you'll go over to the Hugging Face page, click Files and Versions, click on the GGUF file you want, and then click on Download and give it a little bit of time and it'll download. Go to your Downloads folder in the command line, make sure that the Kobold file is executable, and then type dot slash name of the Kobold file and run it. You'll see some stuff happen in the command line. Give it a moment, it'll load. Now from here out, the settings are the same as in Windows. This configuration window is going to come up and I'm going to run through the steps now of what you need to do to configure it to get it ready. Now it's time to configure the settings. So the first thing we want to do is go to GPU ID. And in my case, I only have one video card, but if you have multiple, you can pull this down and select which one you want or select all. The other thing you need to do is set GPU layers if you have a GPU. The default is minus one, but I'll set to 25 and offload some of those layers to my video card. When it says GPU layers, what it's referring to is the layers within the language model, not the layers in the video card. We also have to set the context length. We're going to set the context length in this case to 8192. That's the context length that the Gemma Sutra language model can handle. It's made for that, so we have to set it to that one. Then we're going to click Browse and select the Gemma Sutra language model that I downloaded. In case you're not familiar with context length, that's how much conversation a language model can handle before it runs out of memory. And it's set in number of tokens. One token equals approximately three fourths of a word. Language models use what's called a sliding window. So when you run out of context length, the context window moves along at the end of the conversation, which means it can forget what happened earlier in the conversation. Next, click over to the tokens tab and go to where it says chat completion adapter. And we need to select the correct adapter that's appropriate for the model we're using. In this case, we're using a model that's based on Gemma 2. So I'm going to click on pick pre-made, select Gemma2.json and click open. After it's finished loading, it's going to automatically open a browser window and go to localhost port 5001, as you can see here in my browser. Your firewall might prompt you to allow it. Make sure you do because it has to access that port on your local computer. Your firewall rule should not make a whole rule allowing this out to the internet. It should only be on port 5001 locally on your computer. Before you can start chatting, you have to configure the user interface by clicking on settings and under the format tab, make sure instruct mode is set under usage mode and where it says instruct tag preset, you have to select the correct template for that model. In this case, we're using Gemma 2. Now head over to the samplers tab. Make sure context size is still 8192. The temperature you can play around with, you might get different results where the lower temperature gives you more accurate results and the higher temperatures give you more creativity, but are more likely to give you nonsense. The repetition penalty can stay at 1.07, top P sampling at 0.92. Kind of gets weird when you play around with those, but you can of course experiment. And if you're not sure what a certain setting does, you can hover over the question mark and a little tooltip will come up explaining. Now I'll show you how to make a character card. You can open up any text editor you want. I'll use Notepad and it's just JSON formatted data. I'll have an example in the description of how you have to format the information. I've already made an example character card. It looks kind of like this. 
The character is called Cyborg Steve. Steve Jones was a regular guy turned cyborg by the Texla Corporation who experimented on him by putting a computer chip in his brain. He's His personality type is he's lazy, uninterested, indifferent, and easily annoyed. And the first message is going to say, I'm Cyborg Steve. I don't care about anything. In the scenario for the story that we're going to be engaging with, it says Cyborg Steve is sent by Zelon Busk, the CEO of Texla, to defeat the evil government regulators. Cyborg Steve is confused because he never signed up for this. His greeting is, I am Cyborg Steve. Stop bothering me. His species is a cyborg. His gender is male. His age is 30. His traits are he's a fast runner. He's good at hand-to-hand -hand combat, and he has sardonic quips. His inventory is that he is equipped with night vision goggles, nunchucks, and a bag of potato chips. I've also set some background information for him. Steve Jones was a mild-mannered employee at a warehouse who stocked shells. He did the bare minimum at work and spent his evenings and weekends watching the Home Shopping Network and eating potato chips. One day, he saw an ad on TV looking for test subjects for an experiment to put microchips in people's brains. He signed up and was selected for the surgical procedure that turned him into Cyborg Steve. Save this file into the folder where you downloaded Kobold. I'll just call it character-cyborg-steve.txt. And then we're actually going to pull this down, go to all files, and change .txt to .json. Hit save. Close this. Click over here where it says load JSON file or a character card. Go over to the folder where you downloaded it and click on the character card that you just made. And there it is. Cyborg Steve Jones. Hey, Steve. We need you to defeat the regulators at the Government Department of Brain Microchips. So Cyborg Steve says... Stares blankly. The regulators, what are those? Some kind of weird government people against brain chips? I mean, yeah, sure. I guess I could, but, like, why me? And why now? I didn't sign up for this hero stuff when they made me a cyborg. Ugh, fine. Send me their location or whatever. Don't carry their way, though. You can see this kind of works because it's following along with the character that I created. I'm going to stop here because I'll do a deep dive into the role play in the next video. To go over some other settings, if you click on this gear icon down here, you can click on add image, upload image file, and you can insert an image into the chat. I'm not really sure if using this requires a multimodal model that can do both chat and vision, or if this is something that's more for the reference of the user, but I did notice that setting there. Another useful feature it has is memory. So if I click on this gear icon and go to context, sometimes when the context window runs out, you can actually help it remember things within the world by clicking on add and giving it a key and value pair. So if I put chips here, and what to remember is Cyborg Steve is currently in possession of a bag of ranch flavored potato chips. Hey Steve, what kind of potato chips do you have? The way this works is if you run out of context length during the conversation and you mention chips, it'll put that reminder in during the chat. Another feature is saving the chat. You can click on save and load, and this is browser-based. It says down here, caution, storage slots are saved to a temporary cache and can be deleted by your browser. To avoid losing data, use the download file button. So I can click on save in one of these empty slots. I can change this name to something like Cyborg Steve, click OK. It'll save that into that slot. I can click this download button and it will load and save a JSON file. Later on, I can click on open file here and load that JSON file in. Well, I hope my instructions helped you get Kobold AI set up. And if you actually decide to role play with Cyborg Steve and put it on a text hosting website and a link to it from the comments, I'll read it. The next video I do is actually going to be where I make a long form role play because I've done a couple of videos where I've made short role plays just to give an example, but someone had recommended that I do a long one just to kind of show the capabilities and see what the model does when it runs out of context window. I thought that would be interesting and worthwhile. So tune into the next video, which is part two. If you feel so inclined, I have a super thanks button down below that you can click on to tip me. It's not expected, but it's appreciated. It can help to keep the channel going. I do take time out of my business and out of my life to make these videos. I've spent so much time learning about AI because I'm so passionate about it, and I really don't know what else to do with it besides make YouTube videos. Your support helps to keep the channel going. I hope you tune in for the next video. If you're not subscribed and you want to see me do more instructional videos and language model testing, hit the subscribe button. If you want to be notified when I make a new video, also hit the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.